Joining us this morning is Funstrad Global Advisors co-founder and CNBC contributor Tom Lee. Tom, great to see you. Hope you had a great weekend. Interesting to see your stuff last night. You mentioned a lot of different things. The price breakout, better leadership on Friday at least, better participation in some inflows. I mean, can you rank some of those dynamics? Uh, yes. I mean, I guess the fundamental question we're asking is, uh, you know, on the second week of June, is there still a case for markets to build upon these gains? And uh, I do believe that's the case, Carl. Um, foremost, I think that the big, the, you know, the fangs uh, did the heavy lifting, but I do think breadth is starting to expand. You know, eight out of 11 sectors are now above uh, their 20-day moving average, which means they're a positive trend. But that's also starting from a point of pretty reasonable valuations. You know, we're talking 15 times X fang for the market at a time when interest rates seem to be stabilizing. So I think there's a case for multiple expansion, you know, towards 18 times for that, and that's going to get you 20%. I also think the earnings uh, outlook is improving. We It's close to 60% now have raised earnings estimates for the year. Uh, for industrials, it's actually closer to 81%. So that's pretty shocking. And if we talk about earnings growth improving at a time when the Fed could be pausing, and then we know that short interest rose 7% last week when you look at futures contract. I mean, it's all-time high short positions by institutions. I think that's a fuel for the, the big stocks to kind of stay where they are and the rest of the group to catch up. And, and I think that's actually why markets could advance another 10%. Right. You, your, your point about fading inflation uh, came alive this morning in the Eurozone PPI data. And I know this is year on year, but going from 5.5 to 1 in a month really speaks to the base effects. And I wonder, could we be replicating even some of that uh, here in the States? If not for June, then maybe for July. Well, that's kind of what we think is very possible, which is that when you look at real-time measures of inflation, right now there's things like trueflation or like, you know, Professor Siegel's use of, uh, you know, real-time rent measures. Inflation's pretty close to zero right now, but it's only lagged in the statistical reports of CPI. So. I think the market is beginning to sort of realize that there is disinflation and that's going to allow the Fed to tolerate easing financial conditions. But if that's also the case, you know, for the last 18 months, companies have been really cautious. I mean, they kind of did a recession in earnings because they stopped spending. And I think that's why we could actually be early cycle. Tom, even if um, we seem to be on firmer footing and obviously uh, maybe the, the earnings threat of a big decline is, is not really materializing, how do you think we're set up from this level in terms of forward returns? Because there is a line of thinking that we really didn't see a full retrenchment in valuations, uh, you know, any kind of real flush uh, through the economy in terms of whatever, you know, uh, earnings excesses or uh, that we needed to get rid of, we did. Um, and here we have valuations are what they are. Maybe they can be sustained. But I just wonder if we should expect the kind of bull market returns we got used to after previous big downturns. Uh, yeah, I, I am kind of debating that internally as well. I mean, there's like sort of two-step assessment we have to make going forward. One is, was the recession called correct? Because that was a consensus view. And if we don't have a recession... We don't really have a further drawdown, so we know that all this cash on the sidelines and bearish positioning has to change. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's a big bull market. I think the second dynamic, though, is companies have really proven themselves pretty battle-tested. They survived COVID and the global shutdown. They survived a huge bull effect in the supply chain. They survived a massive inflation wave. And yet investors are saying, well, well these companies which didn't go bankrupt in any of those three cycles could only get a 15 PE. I, to me, I, I think we should re-rate these companies higher because they're inarguably safer credits than governments. And as you know, many companies borrow money at lower costs than the U.S. government today. Hey, finally, Tom, I mean, what do you argue? I mean, the, the, the bears really lean on the liquidity argument where they look at M2, uh, they look at uh, loan growth uh, being a little bit uh, uh, sluggish, obviously QT, higher for longer. I mean, how much does that weigh on your on your thesis overall? Uh, th those are real effects. I mean, M2, you really can't argue that M2 is declining. Uh, that should really kill inflation first, which is positive for risk. On the SLU, who's the senior loan officer surveys, they were really tight into March anyways, so the regional bank crisis didn't seem to add that much tightness. 
But again, that's something to worry about. I, I agree. And then, you know, now with the TGA possibly affecting liquidity, I do think that's another short-term thing to watch out for. But I think the one thing I want to be careful of is these might be reasons for markets to consolidate, but not necessarily for the resumption of a bear trend. And I think that's the difference that we see. Yeah. Uh, the, the getting to that bear point has been uh, difficult for the for the bears. Uh, Tom, uh, nice work over the weekend. Uh, nice to check in with you as well. That's Tom Lee from Fundstrat. Yeah,